Hello, everyone. Today, we are going to do a package user for System 3 version 7, package user configure PAT. Objectives. Part 1, configure dynamic NAT with overload. Part 2, verify dynamic NAT with overload implementation. Part 3, configure PAT using an interface. Part 4, verify PAT interface implementation. Part one, configure dynamic NAT with overload. Last time we configured dynamic NAT only. Dynamic NAT is that a single private address is translated to a single public address. But here, dynamic NAT with overload is a little bit different. Overload means reuse public address. That means multiple private addresses would be translated to a single public address or a few public addresses. In other words, there will be multiple devices to reuse a single public address to access the internet. Step one, configure traffic that will be permitted. On R1, configure one statement for ACL1 to permit any address belonging to 172.16.0.0 16. Let's look at uh, topology here, R1, any address from this network. This network is 172.16.0.0 slash 16. Any address from this network will be permitted to access internet. All right, so let's go to configure an access list to include all the private address that need be translated. Enable configure terminal. Okay, access list here, access list one. Permit the network address 172.16.0.0 followed by wildcard mask 00255255. Okay, this wildcard mask 00255255 is for the network slash 16. Okay, step two, configure a pool of address for NAT. Configure a one with NAT pool that uses the two usable addresses in the 209.165.200.232 slash 30 address space. So two usable addresses, these are two usable public addresses. We need to configure two public addresses. Okay, in this pool. Okay, let's go to configure NAT pool, IP NAT pool, followed by uh, pool name. Here the pool name is any pool name. Any name and uh, and look at here this address 209 265 200 232 this is a network address 232 so next address 233 is the host address this is the host 234 second one all right so name 209 5, 200, 233. 5, 200, 234. And the net mask. Net mask is a subnet mask. 255, 255, 255, All right, so this net mask, 255, 255, 255, 255, 255 is for the network slash 30. Remember that Flash 30 network has only two available or usable host address. Step three, associate ACL1 with the NAT pool and you allow addresses to be reused. Here's a reused. ACL1 include all the private addresses that need to be translated. NAT pool include the public address. We just configured here the two public addresses, 233, 234. And uh, we're going to reuse them. 
go to do the association, combining these uh, private addresses and public addresses together. IP and AP inside the source. Inside source is access leads to one, so leads to one. And the pool is uh, any thorny. Okay, don't forget overload. Overload means reuse. Overload, reuse the public address in this pool. The pool configure the entity interfaces, configure our one interfaces with the appropriate inside and outside and commands. And look at the, this R1, the inter, R1 has three interfaces, G000, G001, S01, S0. S010 is outside the interface because it's connected to internet. These two interface, G00 and G001 are inside interface. They connect it to the local LAN networks. So we start to configure the interfaces. Interface S01, 0, IP and AT outside. Interface G000, IP and AT inside. Interface G001. IP and AT inside. Permission is part. Okay. Interfaces. Part two, verify dynamic and AT with overload implementation. Step one, access services across the internet from the web browser of each of the pieces that use R1 as their gateway. PC1, L1, PC2, L2. PC1, L1, PC2, L2 access the web page for server one. Server one is here. Let's go to do PC1. So from PC1, we tap in the server one's IP address 209.165.201. Apply. I'll press it to 209. Right. Make a copy. So server one shows up. So that means PC1 reached server one's web page, succeeds. L1, do the same thing to server one, succeeds, right? PC2 to server one, so succeeds. L2 to server one, succeeds too. Okay, all succeeds. So what's the question? Were all connections successful? Yes. Step two, view NAT translations. View the trans NAT translations on R1. Okay, show R1 translation. Let's go to executive, uh, privilege executive mode. Do show command, show IP NAT translations. Okay, translation come out. So, uh, let's look at the notice. Notice that all what devices were able to communicate and they are using just one address out of the pool. PAT will continue to use the same address until it runs out of port numbers to associate with the translation. Once that occurs, the next address in the pool will be used. While the theoretical limit would be 65,536 since the port number field is a 16-bit number. The device would like would likely run out of memory before that limit would be reached. All right. So let me just look at here inside local first. Inside local is a private private address. These four private addresses are for these uh, four devices. All right. So let's check one by one. PC one. PC one's IP address is here. 172, 16, 10, 10. This is 16, 10, 10 here. 172, 16, 10, 10. This is PC one's private address. AO one. 
L1 is 10, 11. Here, 172, 16, 11. This L1 is private address. Arch. In PC2, PC2 is 11, 10. 11 teams here. 172, 16, 11, 10. This is PC2 is private. L2, 11, 11. Okay, here, 172, 16, 11, 11. This is L2's private address. All right, so all these um, devices and private devices are here. And then we look at the global. Inside global is public address. All these four public addresses are the same. 209-165-200-233. This is, is the first public address we configured in the NAT pool. Look at here. This is the pool we configured. This is the first public address. This is the second public address. So all these four devices are reusing the first public addresses. So first the public public address. And with the port number involved, here's the 1024, 1025, 1026, 1027. These are the port number. Port number is to identify the devices that the package originated. Okay, we finished uh, this part. Part three, configure PAT using an interface. Step one, configure traffic that will be permitted on R2. This time it's R2. Configure an step, uh, one statement for ACL2 to permit any address belonging to 172, 1700, slash 16. Okay, here, the network, 172.17.00.16 is this network. Any address from this network will be permitted to access internet. So we're going to configure an access list to include all the private addresses that uh, need to be translated. So in enable configure terminal access uh, Access to the list two this time is permit what's the network uh, address 172.17 here. Okay, 172.17.00 and the wildcard mask is 00, 00 255.255. And uh, step two associates uh, ACL2 with the MAT interface and allow addresses to be reused. Okay, uh, ACL2 include all the private addresses that need, that need to be translated. MAT interface will be reused to access internet, to allow addresses to be reused. The address, here the address is the IP address of MAT interface. So enter, so which interface will be used as MAT interface? Look at here, enter the R2 MAT statement to use the interface connected to the internet. So R2, we're gonna use the internet connected to the in, uh, interface connected to the internet. Here, interface S011 connected to the internet. So we're gonna use this interface and reuse it. and provide translations for all internal devices. Okay, let's, uh, let's do association. I, sorry, IP, MAT, in, inside source. So this is a list of two interface, S, Zero, one, one. Don't forget overload. Overload. Overload is uh, reuse. Reuse this interface to access internet. All right. So step three: configure the MAT interfaces. Configure R two interfaces with the 
appropriate inside and outside NAT commands. All right. R2, R2 also have uh, three interfaces, G000, G001, and S011. S011 is outside interface because it's connected to the internet. These two interfaces are inside, they connected to the local LAN networks. So if we configure interface, interface S011, like in AT outside interface G000, like in AT in. Interface G001, IP80 inside. So we finished doing this part. Mm, interfaces, yeah. Huh? Part four, verify PAT interface implementation. Step one, access services across the internet from the web browser of each pieces that connect, that use R2 as their gateway. PC3 L3, PC4 L4, PC3 L3, PC4 R. This devices access the web page for server one. Okay. So on PC3, and we type in the number one's IP address. So, yeah, succeeds. PC3 reached the server one's web page. L1, no, L3, L3 to server 1 succeeds. PC4 to server 1 succeeds. L4 to server 1 succeeds. All succeeds. Yeah. There are question were all connections successful? Yes. Step two, view NAT translations. So view translations on R2. R2. The show IP NAT trans, translation. Yeah, here's a translation. And then let's look at uh, the translation. And the inside local is private address. This four private address is for these four devices. So let's look at PC3's private address is uh, 172.17.10.10. Here, 172.17.10.10. This is uh, PC3's private. AL3's private is 10.11. 10.11. Here is 10.11. 172.17.10.11. This L3 is private. PC4 is 1110 here. This is here 1110. This is PC4's private. L4. L4 is 1111 here. 1111. So all these uh, devices, private address are here. And uh, look at the uh, the uh, inside global is inside global is public address 209 The public address are the same. So all these four devices are you are using the same public address. This public address should be the IP address of S011. Because we configure S011 reload and it's reuse this interface to access internet. Let's go to check uh, interface S011's IP address. Show IP interface S011. Okay, here. IP address S011 is the one two zero nine one sixty five two zero two one thirty. This is exactly the same as the global address. Is over now Yeah, so that means uh, we're using interface S011 IP address as public address. And uh, here's the 
fourth number, fourth number, 1024, 1025, 1026, 1027. Fourth number is to identify the devices that, uh, that a package originated. Okay, the station we can see. Step three, compare MAT statistics on R1 and R2. Compare the MAT statistics on the two devices. Statistics, okay, let's pull out R1 statistics. Enable, show IP MAT statistics. All right, then pull out the R2 statistics. IPMAT statistics. All right, so what's the question? Why doesn't R2 list any dynamic mapping? Dynamic mapping. So at least compare these uh, two outputs. On R1, dynamic mapping includes the information we configured inside source, yeah, and the pool, pool name and public address uh, in the pool. Yes, but on R2, dynamic mapping, there's no any information here. But why? The question is why R2 doesn't list any information, mapping information. That is because on R1, R1, we uh, configured, we configured a, a NAT pool and uh, with the two public address inside. But on R2, we don't configure any NAT pool and uh, no any public address in the pool. We just uh, directly use outside interface S011's IP address as public address. That's why R2 doesn't have mapping information, dynamic mapping information. All right, so we answer all the questions. Look at completion status is 100%. That means we perfectly finished this package with your bigger PAT. Thank you for watching my video. If you like my video and think it's helpful for you, please thumbs up and subscribe my channels to support. See you next time.